And as part of that, a ceremonial puck drop at center ice about to take place here at SAP Center. Representing SAP, Jonathan Becker at center ice, along with the San Jose Sharks newly named Chief Operating Officer, John Tortora. As the captains for the two sides come to center ice, Joe Thornton joined by the Canucks, Henrik Sedin momentarily. And I guess this makes it official, Drew. It is now officially SAP Center at San Jose, the hockey rink. It is the hockey rink here at San Jose. SAP, brand new sponsor, playing the naming rights. Number 13 on that, I thought it was a Rafi Torres. It's an SAP Center jersey, probably the one and only. Joe Thornton excited to get this season going as we all are. Well, it wasn't that long ago, right here at SAP Center at San Jose, the Sharks took out the Vancouver Canucks in a fourth game, but it was a sweep through four in a row, starting with the Torres overtime winner up in BC. It was. It was Rafi Torres getting things going. Sharks get 2 0 lead. Logan Couture was the monster. Huge goal here. Power play for the San Jose Sharks. Just a couple minutes remaining. Joe Pavelski ties it up. And then on the power play with Daniel Cedini in the box. There's the rebound. Patrick Marlowe got his fourth goal in as many games. And the San Jose Sharks are on to a very tough second round against the LA Kings. Opening week of hockey is presented by Gary Queen. The San Jose Sharks season 2013-14 is underway. As Auntie Niemi will cover it up at the side of the net. And that leads us to our starting goaltenders for this first game game of the campaign. The Vesna Trophy finalist finished third in the voting for the best goaltender in the NHL last year. Antti Niemi put up career numbers, and who would have thunk it? Roberto Luongo, now the number one man in goal for the Vancouver Canucks after the shocking trade at the draft back in June of Corey Schneider to the New Jersey Devils. There's no more goaltending controversy in Vancouver, at least for a couple of weeks. There is not. Roberto Luongo is the man. you got to like it for Roberto Luongo because he certainly was a professional last year with all the turmoil. Now Tyler Kennedy trying to get to a loose puck as he was hung up by Henrik Sedin. As the puck is played back up to Alex Burrows for Vancouver. And number 14 in white sends it back down to the ice in Sharks territory. New faces on both sides, but particularly for the Sharks. In fact, all four forward lines, Drew, have somebody on them that we saw none of last year, or in the case of Matt Pellick on the fourth line, very little. Interesting thing about Matt Pellick, number 42 for the San Jose Sharks. His uncle is Mike Gillis, the general manager of the Vancouver Canucks, the Canucks, I should say. And you look at the San Jose Sharks, what I noticed about the Sharks in the preseason is that they play fast. They are a faster team than they were last year at the end of the season. And they Matt. played pretty quick last year. Matt Nieto on the ice now. He's number 83. He's from Long Beach, California, playing in his first National Hockey League game here tonight. A wrist shot from the right point, kicked out by the Emmy. Now played to the near side boards. Newcomer Tyler Kennedy up for the speedy Nieto. And it's controlled again by the Vancouver defense. The Sharks have quite a streak going against the Canucks right now. If you go back to this past preseason when San Jose beat Vancouver twice, the four-game sweep, and three straight wins in the regular season last year, the Sharks have a nine-game winning streak going against the Canucks. Hamu's wrist shot batted away by the enemy as it tipped up high, and he swatted it away with his glove. Now Yannick Hansen in a collision on the far side boards with super banger Tommy Wingles. Now Jason Demers, number five, trying to keep it away from Hansen to this side. It's a healthy Ryan Kessler. Hamuse loads up from the point. Fires it to the middle, looking for a tip from Higgins. And now Bieksa sends it back in for Kessler. So far, the Canucks dominating the play in the Sharks' end as it's cleared out to the neutral zone. Fred Hennigan, Vancouver, looks like they're bringing a lot with their defense. They're pinching down the walls. Yeah, they're getting it deep below that goal line. There's three men all on the four check right now, guys. And obviously the D, like you talked about, Drew, coming down as well. What's it like first game here? You've been, you know, you played a lot of years in the NHL. Is the first game always exciting? Absolutely. If you can't get the butterflies going, if you can't get the adrenaline going, you should be in another profession. These guys are ready. They're excited about game one. Well, in this case of the Sharks, too, with Thomas Hurdle and Matt Nieto, you have two players making their NHL debuts as well. You talk about jitters and sweaty palms and butterflies. They're certainly all part of the experience, but usually a shift or two, and those are all gone. Well, Hurdle said he wasn't going to be nervous. He's going to be excited. Henrik Sedin 
And it's stopped by Brent Burns. Second effort. And Henrik gets it to Daniel momentarily. Justin Braun with his hands full behind the Sharks' net as Alex Edler's pass is broken up. Braun sends it back into Vancouver territory. Luongo directing traffic, and he gives it back to Daniel. Jason Garrison, number five. He had the booming slap shot for the Canucks, although we didn't see a whole lot of it in the playoffs last year when the Canucks were guided by head coach Alain Vigneault, who left in the offseason and switched jobs, trading places, if you will, with the new head coach of the Vancouver Canucks, John Tortorella. Chipped in by James Shepard for the Sharks. The fourth line on as Shepard puts it on net. Luongo with the save. Battle in the corner. Played up for Mike Santorelli, number 25 for Vancouver. Up the boards. And Brad Richardson, the former LA King, in a collision there. And we have a hand pass called. As we look at our Lexus keys to the game, Drew. For me, Brent Hannikin, I think effort. Todd McClellan talked about it this morning. The one thing any player can control is the effort they're going to put in tonight. What do you got? Well, with that comes pace. And how do you get pace? You get five guys moving up the ice together, getting it deep, working below the goal line. Those are the little things that you want to do to create that up and down, and the effort will be there when you've got pace, Drew. Todd McClellan with his top line on the ice. Joe Thornton centering Brent Burns on the right. And 19-year-old Thomas Hurdle from Prague in the Czech Republic playing in his first ever NHL regular season game. And Hurdle was impressive in the preseason. Drew, he led the Sharks with three goals. He sure was. The kid's got a nose for the net. He's got terrific skill in tight. Even though he's a big guy, he's a guy that can make things happen in a small space. Thornton weaving his way through the neutral zone on to Matt Irwin who pinches for the Sharks. And we have a whistle. Oh, and we're going to have a holding call against the Canucks. We talked about last year in the playoffs, Randy. The one thing that the San Jose Sharks really were able to take Thank advantage of was 32, the two minutes holding. discipline or lack thereof of the Vancouver Canucks. Dale Weiss is in the Bay Alarm penalty box. And the Sharks power play, which was so lethal against Vancouver in that four-game series last spring, Drew's on the ice for the first time. And there's the new head coach, John Tornarello, the 17th head coach in Vancouver Canucks history as we look at Dale Weiss in the Bay Alarm penalty box. Sharks on a Cash Creek power play. Off the draw. The pass from the left side. As Thornton tried to move it to the front for Couture, Logan will pass it back. Now at the blue line, teed up by Pavelski. He'll hand it off. Thornton looks, shoots, and it's knocked down in front. Good movement up high, Brett, and also good job in front of the net. Boyle, Thornton, Rister, that's blocked by Bieksa, but it comes to Thornton skates. Couture banks it back up the boards for Boyle. Now Pavelski working from the right point. Boyle has to wait on it a bit. Thornton, nice back pass for Boyle. From the high slot, Boyle hands for Pavelski. Looks out front, touch pass for Couture from Marlow, and he just missed. A lot of player movement by the Sharks. Player and puck movement. Boyle again to Pavelski. Thornton looks, shoots off the crossbar. And cleared by Vancouver. That's a nice looking play. Dan Boyle starts to move across the blue line. Brett grabs the middle of the ice, and then he's got nothing but options. Well, Joe Thornton pulls the trigger there. You like to see that early in the season, him getting that on a stick and letting it go. Shooting the puck was emphasized practice after practice in training camp and throughout the preseason. And we're seeing it here on this first power play. Kennedy gets a rough ride on the boards from Henrik Sedin, but the Sharks have it again at center. It's fired in by Irwin. Still over half a minute to go on this first Shark power play of the season. Jason Demers, he fires it wise. It comes back down to his partner, Irwin. Now Hurdle, out front, wanted Burns away from him to Daniel Sedin. The Sedin's killing penalties this year. John Tortorella wants to see them in all situations. He said they want to be more involved, and he's granting them their wish. That's what John does. John puts his best players on the ice in all the situations. They have a reason they're getting paid as much as they are. They get all that ice time, you have to use them. Richardson, new to the Canucks this year, signed as a free agent from L.A. He'll fire it around, and that's just about going to do it for the Sharks' power play as it's out of play with three seconds to go in the penalty. A good-looking power play. As you talked about, Brett, Joe Thornton's going to be pulling the trigger. First of all, great one-touch pass, Patrick Marlow to the slot, and then here comes Joe Thornton with the shot, head up all the way. Well, I like the puck movement and player movement, Brent. Yeah, they're finding those seams. These guys have played so long together that they know where each other's going to be. They can exchange into different positions. And a really nice-looking power play, like you said. 
Off the draw, it goes off the back glass, out of the box is Weiss, and we're back to five on five here in the first period of the scoreless first game of the season for both these teams who played twice in the preseason. The Sharks would also play their first road game this season in Vancouver next week. That'll be on Thursday, a week from tonight. Mark Edward Blasik, he'll audition for Team Canada throughout this season. He was at the orientation camp in Calgary back in August. He may be a sleeper in some people's minds, but I know Drew Remenda, you think he's got an excellent chance to represent Canada at the Olympics. I certainly do. Mark Edward Vlasic is the epitome of a steady defenseman. There's going to be a lot of guys who will take risks for Team Canada. There's a lot of guys who take risks for the San Jose Sharks. Mark Edward Vlasic always plays the percentages. Very detailed guy. He's trustworthy, and that's what you want. Scott Hannon. Came to the Sharks at the trade deadline last year from Nashville. Of course, an original Sharks draft pick. And his play near the end of last year and throughout the two rounds of the playoffs earned him a new one-year contract. So Hannon, the familiar, now number 27, back on the blue line again for the Sharks this year. As it's played ahead by Daniel Sedin, that's Hannon cutting in front of him and sending it around to the near side where Kennedy's waiting. Checked in at the left point. Now Daniel wants Burroughs out front, and he's got him, but he booted it off his skate, and the Sharks are able to get control back. Demers fanned on it, thanks to the back check by Burroughs. Now Henrik tried to thread the needle to Daniel, but it's intercepted by Hannon. Flipped ahead. Kennedy can't knock it down. Turns back for it. He's got it alive in the Canuck zone. Leaned on by Edler. Trying to feed Thornton. But it's back to the Canucks. Ryan Kessler, who's finally healthy after what seemed like a couple of seasons of injury problems for number 17. Here's Kessler into the high slot. What a Christopher Higgins. Now the Exa slaps one high and around. What's going on, you hammer? And a Hansen and the pass by Kessler. Sharks give it right back, though. Kessler down at the line. In front, he had Hansen. The Exa drive. Niemi got a piece of that. John Tortorello wants his team to be aggressive. The Vancouver Canucks are playing a very aggressive four check and it's working for them right now. Yannick Hansen wanted the pass out front, cut off neatly by Hurdle there. And Thornton will send it wide out to Matt Irwin. 11.44 left here in the first period of game one of the season. Scoreless tie here at SAP Center at San Jose. Glad you're with us for game one here on Comcast Sportsnet California. Canucks attacking again. The end of save. We've got a delayed penalty coming up to the Sharks. Slash come up. Vancouver will have Brent Burns in the Bay Alarm penalty box. And John Tortorella's team goes to work on the power play. He puts a premium on special teams. He won that 2004 Stanley Cup with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Dan Boyle played for him there. He is the winningest U.S.-born coach in the NHL. I think John is going to be the spark that Vancouver Canucks need. He certainly has a reputation for being acerbic with the media. He has the reputation of being tough on his players. But he's gone to great lengths to change his relationship with the media. I'm not sure so much with the players. And, of course, we're very early in this experiment of John Tortorella being behind the bench of the Vancouver Canucks, ironically switching positions with Alain Vigneault, who will be in here next week with the New York Rangers. Here's Daniel Sedin. Top of the slot. They score. Garrison with the one-timer. And the Canucks take a 1-0 lead. Now, Jason Garrison... Talked about the start of the year. He wants to get back into being Jason Garrison like he was earlier in his career before he got to the Vancouver Canucks where he's had trouble settling in. He's got the big shot you mentioned. Nice play as Sedin takes it to the net. Garrison walks in and Brett, the beautiful one-timer set up. Man, that kid can shoot it. Yeah, right here they look like they were going to go back to the point. The uh, Sharks anticipated that, but no, it went right into Sedin and he just brings it back to Garrison for the nice shot. Logan couldn't get on the ground quick enough. You talk about terrific support. Henrik and Daniel Sedin run a nice little play out of the corner, and that really opened up the space in the attack towards the net, which stalled everybody on the penalty kill for the Sharks. Garrison on the power play with his first of the year from Daniel and Henrik Sedin at 9.04. A power play goal for Vancouver, who a couple of years ago were very prolific with the man advantage. Last year, though, they fell to 22nd on the power play. Obviously a great way for them to start in that important special team situation. Anna Hansen with a slap shot that's blocked by Matt Irwin out of play.
The key on this play, I think, guys, is when you look at the Sedin, especially Daniel Sedin. Watch the little play in the corner. Go ahead and roll it, gang. As the play goes in the corner, as you talked about it, Brent, it looked like they wanted to go back up top as they make the little turn. But look at that. Henrik and Daniel just know where each other is. Daniel attacks the net, and you have to respect that. That's why Garrison was able to open up. It's the support between Henrik and Daniel Sedin that creates that goal. So almost halfway through this first period on the shot clock, the Canucks ahead by one and on the scoreboard. Ahead by one on that power play goal by Garrison as the puck goes out of play on the near side glass. John, there, oh, there, there is 19-year-old Thomas. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to talk about John. I want to Tortorella. talk about John for a minute. When you look at you talk about John Tortorella, and he did win the Stanley Cup with the Tampa Bay Lightning, but he's been in the East his whole time. But he's also got with him Glenn Gullitson, who coached the Dallas Stars the last couple of years, and John Tortorella talking this morning how much of a help Glenn has been in trying to get him acquainted with the Western Conference. Well, of course, last year, the conferences didn't meet because of the shortened schedule. Tortorella never saw anybody in the West all year from a coaching standpoint behind the bench for the Rangers. When you think about American coaches coaching in Canada, it doesn't happen very often. As we look at U.S. born coaches of Canadian based teams, John Tortorella is there. Bob Johnson, the Badger, did such a great job. I like John Tortorella. I think John's an excellent coach. He can be acerbic with the media. He's just got his ways. Sometimes I think that gets way overblown, but doesn't get looked at enough is how good of a coach John Tortorella is. Here's Andrew Desjardin. Sends it up top. Hand and shot. And Longo with the glove save. Good two years ago. Neither Thomas Hurdle or Matt Nieto were born then. Drew, you were at that first game. I was watching it on television, already a Sharks broadcaster. We're old. We are old, and these kids are young and skilled, looking forward to their future as San Jose Sharks. It's, it's a pretty good future for the Sharks when you look at how you're able to stay competitive, yet get a little bit younger each year as Doug Wilson is continuing to do that and build this franchise to continue to keep it as a contender. I'm guessing there's a lot of longtime Sharks fans out there tonight who were attendees in the Cow Palace in that first season who were saying, really? That was 22 <laughs> years ago? We're old too. My daughter Jordan was born that training camp, September of 1991. So I just gauged the years and the wrinkles and the creases by her. Here's Kennedy now for the Sharks to the Vancouver line where he's slowed down by Bieksa. Gets back on it against Dan Hanews. Thornton ties up with Hanews and goes down, and the Canucks are able to bring it back out. Burroughs crisscrossing with Higgins, whose shot is wide. Burns back defensively, missed on that pass to Boyle. It gives Edler a chance to get it to the net. He shot it wide. Higgins trying to jam on short side. Down with his glove and stick with Niemi as Kessler sends it back to the line. Another shot. Karam's back into the crease, and I think it was kicked out by Boyle. Garrison quickly to Edler. Canucks get another puck to that. And it's shot just wide by Kessler. Boy, the Canucks are doing an excellent job in front of the net. Also with their defense, keeping pucks in. Brett, how do the Sharks get out of that? Well, you've got to be tight down low. You've got to start opening your mouth. Talk to each other. The five-foot passes sometimes is all you're going to need to work it out of your defensive zone. Demers puts it on net. Stick save as Wingles. Nice to find Pavelski down low against Mike Santorelli, the former Florida Panther. Richardson, he'll scoot to center. And a nice knockdown by Hannon. Breaks it up. Pavelski trying to take an advantage of Tana being caught up ice. Here's Hannon again. Hannon Longo flashing the leather with a strong glove save. Talk to John Tortorella today. What did he hope to see from his team? He said he wanted an aggressive team. He's getting that right now. Good work by the Canucks in front. They're aggressive after the puck. They're aggressive with their appointment coming down. They're aggressive on their forecheck. Nice move by Pavelski. Again, Scott Hannon comes in, doesn't wait, tees it up right away. And a good flash to the leather by Roberto Luongo. As you said, the surprise guy to be starting. Every thought it'd be Schneider. Schneider got traded. Luongo's the man. And he's going to be the guy that takes the Canucks as far as they can go with the San Jose Sharks one little flurry but the Canucks are really coming back with more here's a backhand try to long to a save loose puck in the crease and Thornton couldn't put it in Hannon back low taken by Hurdle the rookie Thomas Hurdle with Thornton and Burns drop pass for Thornton 
He'll relay it on in the direction of Burns, broken up, but it's kept in by Demers. Aaron Stick on the ice, it belongs to Sestito. He picks it up. Demers has the puck come right to him on a lucky carom. Hannon tries to get it to the net again. It's rejected. He'll step up and get it deep behind the net for Thornton. Joe on his backhand to forehand. Up top for Demers. Far side, Longo angles across. Makes a great save off Brent Burns. And a penalty coming up to the Sharks. Burns is getting another one for tripping or cross-checking. Great opportunity for Brent Burns on the shot. Very few guys can do this. A hard pass right through the seam. Brett Hedekin and a terrific shot. But over aggressive, I guess. This is a great play. This is a really hard thing to do. One time this, and Roberto Wongo comes across. Now, here is the push on the back by Brent Burns. One more time. How tough is this, Brett? Yeah, this is. A, it's great that he's got his feet kind of together. He can move one way or another. It was a great play by Burns, and what a better pass by Jason Demers to find him on the backside. 12:48, time of the cross-checking penalty for Burns, who put down Dale Weiss. Vancouver on their second power play. They're one for one on the goal by Garrison, and he fires again, and the Emmy got a piece of that. Intercepted by Pavelski off Daniel Sedin, and he'll dump it wide across the ice, trying to hit Marlowe coming into the zone. And Vancouver has it back again. The captain, Henrik Sedin. The Twins are without a contract beyond this season. Big year for them as Daniel hands it back off to Henrik. Up top, Garrison. He dropped down, but he misfired on the one-timer. Comes free to Plon, and he'll drive it down. Right now, the Sharks out shooting Vancouver 11-5, despite a power play and a half so far for the Canucks. Burrows. And that's why hit the referee on the far side of the ice. He's all right. A race to the loose puck. Couture got there, supported by Wingles, and they work it out. Nice teamwork there on the penalty kill. Absolutely right, Randy. Down under a minute now on the Vancouver power play. They lead it 1 0. Cannon, the native of Richmond, B.C., just outside of Vancouver, and he'll clear it down. Charts with a number of Vancouver connections and British Columbia connections, of course, Matt Irwin from Vancouver Island, Brentwood Bay outside Victoria. David Booth now for the Canucks as their power play continues with the second unit on the ice and off the glove of Hamus. Pavelski thought about giving chase, but stays back in the neutral. Now he's got a breakaway. Joe Pavelski, save by the long Damn, Hamus just gave that to Pavelski. Back to Pavelski again. Vlasic dumps it behind the Canuck net, and they regroup. A dozen seconds left on the Canuck power play. And Pavelski came oh so close to tying the game up. Now Irwin with Dujardin. As Burns gets set to step out of the penalty box, and the Sharks have their first kill. Still 1-0 as Burroughs sends it in. Edler, he's rocked by Burns. Desjardins on the boards, gets it away from Burroughs, now Thornton waiting for Burns, Thornton waiting for Burns, Thornton, the trailer, and the shot goes wide, here's a chance for Burns, and a mass of humanity in the crease, a Canuck penalty coming up, as that shot might have hit Burroughs, who's down on a knee, next to Roberto Luongo, and Burroughs seems to be in some difficulty. Alex Edler is getting a penalty for hooking Brent Burns, coming up the ice, who's trying to join the rush. Sharks will have a power play. Joe and he was going to chase the puck down, changed his mind, and now he just sat back and contained, got above the play. Dan Hanyu's fans on the pass, tries to go five hole, and Roberto Luongo takes it away. And as you said, the massive humanity. There's the shot as Alex Edler was getting the penalty. I think that banked off of Edler, then Burroughs in the head. Let's have a look. The shot. Bang. No, boy, there's a great advertisement for why you should be wearing a visor wow. in the National Hockey League. That's Alex Sorry there, Randy. That gave, I'll tell you, that visor just saved him a trip to the training room to get stitched up on there. What a play that was. Absolutely, as Alex Edler is hooking Brent Burns. It's in the Bay Alarm penalty box, and the Sharks get their second power play opportunity. Interference to Colin Edler at 15-11. Sharks power play goes to work for a second time tonight. The first opportunity they had showed a lot of promise. They moved the puck well, got their opportunities, and showed a propensity to want to shoot the puck a lot. Mentioned Todd McClellan was emphasizing that during training camp and practices. Marlowe with speed trying to weave through the Vancouver defense. 
Cleared to the line, but kept alive by Boyle. Down the boards, Thornton can't control it. Hamuse will slap it out. Vancouver's penalty killed good last year. They were eight. Sharks power play. That's been good for a number of years now. Tied for seventh last year in the regular season. And against the Canucks in the playoff round last year, Sharks had seven power play goals in the four-game series. Thornton. Down at the line, Couture back for Boyle. Pavelski will fire it wide. Now Boyle again as he ranges over to the far side. Thornton gives it back to him. Dan Boyle to Joe Pavelski. Back for Boyle's one-timer. Just missed the net. And it's chipped out by Bieksa. Dan Boyle not happy with himself there. Slammed the stick on the ice. Just missed that shot wide. Good place to take that shot to there, Drew. Right from the middle of the ice. Irwin dumps it on the net. Now a race to the corner. Garrison got there a hair early, but Irwin hangs in and is able to tie it up. Three guys, three guys, and you see that Jason Demers starts to sneak in. Demers, good foot speed to beat Santorelli to the puck in the corner. Now Demers working on the point as it's fired back to Burns. He'll tee it up. A tip play in the long go. Robs Hurdle. Flicked off the boards. Back to Demers once more. Out of the corner, they're thinking give and go, but Hurdle misread the pass. Canucks were able to clear 10 to go on the power play. I Hurdle did, I think he wanted to take a little bit of space there. I think we, what he was trying, Brett was going to take that puck to the net. Yeah, Kennedy was waiting for him yeah. to take a couple steps to the net there. He'll learn those little things the more he plays. That's it for the power play as Edler steps back on the ice. It remains a 1-0 Vancouver lead with 2.42 left to go in the first uh, period. Two shots on that power play so far for the Sharks, but they're 0-2 with the man advantage in this period as Pavelski lost the handle on it, trying to get it back, but it comes to center for Kessler. Ryan Kessler's wrister comes hard and wide off the boards, back to the Emmy. He's forced to freeze it. I like this tip play by the net. It shows guys when... Brett, when I see defensemen doing this, shooting off the net, shows that they're really reading the play well. Well, there's so many guys that are in shot lanes today. You know that you've got to get your head up as a defenseman and try to find a lane to the front of the net. Sometimes you're going to see that stick, and that's what Dan Boyle did there. Yeah, he did a nice shot, and I really liked it. Hurdle just was able just to roll in front. And those tip plays, that's not by accident. Obviously, it's a design, it's a set play, but guys like Hurdle stay out after practice all the time, working on those little hand movements, being able to tip the puck. So in a game, it just comes natural. And 34-year-old Roberto Luongo looked pretty nifty uh, kicking that right leg pad out on has, He has looked pretty nifty to start this game off. Without a doubt, he's the reason that it is one nothing for the Canucks. 14-5, the shots in favor of San Jose. As Matt Pellick tries to send it in with a hard wrister from the right side, but the Sharks go offside. Well, tickets for all Sharks home games are on sale now, and there are still tickets available for the rest of this three-game homestand. You can see the Sharks take on Shane Doan and the Coyotes on Saturday night here, and then the New York Rangers make their one and only appearance of the season here next Tuesday night. Get tickets now at Ticketmaster.com slash San Jose Sharks. Be fun to see every team in the NHL in SAP Center at least once this year. Yeah, it's going to be awesome when the fans get to have Sidney Crosby here, Evgeny Malkin, Alexander Ovechkin, and the Boston Bruins, the Big Bad Bruins coming to town. It's going to be great. Rangers are opening against Phoenix tonight. And the Emmy forced to make a save as the Sedins go to work. As you mentioned, Antti Niemi, and there is Henrik Sedin, captain. Iron Man, this is the 630th straight game. Second among active players. Jay Bomeister is the number one guy. Henrik Sedin, Daniel Sedin there. Unbelievable when you watch the league. They don't get enough credit for how good they are. And especially in their hometown of Vancouver, they don't get near enough pats on the back. Henrik Sedin turned 33 years of age last week, and ironically, so did Daniel. <laughs> really? They the same birthdays? Yes. Wow. My kids are the same way. Davis and Donovan are the same way. Here's Higgins, and it's off a skate to the front of the Sharks' net. Joe Thornton now as the Sharks are changing on the fly. Demers with some ice. He takes his shot that's blocked by Hanu. Kessler, nifty little move to get it around Thornton to be Exa. He'll bank it off the glass for Hansen as Hannon for the Sharks finds Hurdle open. Now a stretch pass for Burns. Off the boards, and he almost got it through past Hamu. Thornton spots Braun, and his shot deflects off a Canucks stick out of play. Faceoff will stay in the Canucks zone. 
Both teams want to go to work on their forecheck. Both teams want to make sure that they can create opportunities. Joe Thornton, good stick coming in, but a nice block. It's Chris Higgins as Justin Braun, the right-handed shooting defenseman, came in and took the Joe Thornton pass. That was interesting, guys, listening to Joe Thornton talk about, hey, just want to get back out and play. One thing about Joe Thornton, he loves to play the game. He loves to be at the rink, loves to be around the guys. And he's not kidding when he says he loves to get up in front of these fans. Kennedy wheels a backhand wide after great work on the boards by Couture to keep the play going. Richardson backed up by Tanev. And now the Canucks have it as Garrison skates ahead. Gives it right back to Mark Edward Vlasic. He runs into some opposition, but good second effort by number 44. Now Marlowe trying to chase it down. In front, Kachur taps it to the net. And Luongo acrobatically keeps it out. What an effort by Patrick Marlowe. Staying with the play. Now Kennedy back up top. Vlasic deflected, blocked in front of Luongo. Loose to Kachur again. Kennedy is shot. Save. Couture back for Kennedy again. It's up into the netting. And Roberto Luongo is single-handedly right now keeping this a 1-0 game. Well, the San Jose Sharks have got the momentum going their way right now. They've been terrific on the four checks. Staying with pucks. Look at Patrick Marnell battle off. Get puck position. And Logan Couture coming in. And Roberto Luongo flicks the puck away. 40-some seconds left. Just an excellent effort by all three players involved in the last play. Tyler Kennedy pushes it back to the point. Quick shot. Deflection in front. Partially blocked. Block. Logan Couture all after the puck, as was Tyler Kennedy. Good pressure by the San Jose Sharks, and that man right there, Roberto Luongo, stopping all 16 the Sharks have thrown at him in the first period. Time under 20 seconds. Sharks would love to tie it up here before they go into the room. Burns from the corner. He just shakes off the hit by Edler, takes it himself to the net. Backhander wide. Irwin now. That's off Burroughs to the back of the net. Bieksa there, but so is Irvin, who absorbs a cross-check in the back from Bieksa. Play continues as the time runs out here in a very energy-packed first period as the Sharks outshoot Vancouver 16-7. We've got a scrum in front of the Canuck net right now, but it looks like they'll separate them all. That's it for the first period. The score. Take it home with you. That's all we need. More stuff to eat when we're at home. Love Dairy Queen. Thomas Hurdle, the 19-year-old forward playing in his first NHL game. I'm sure ice cream isn't on his diet these days. Then it is. <laughs> he's Can't not, not going to admit to it. Second period underway. The Sharks with 16 shots in that first period, as we said. They came from a dozen different players in that opening 20 minutes. Matt Nieto out on this line now with Tommy Wingles and Joe Pavelski is the team start and even strength here in this second stanza. Matt Irwin locks up with Yannick Hansen. Dan Boyle, his defense partner, there to play it up the boards for Wingles. Now Pavelski, and he gets a rough ride from Bieksa as we get our first look at hybrid icing and it's one of the changes among several in the NHL this year where it's a judgment call by the linesman and they're going to make that judgment earlier they're going to make it about the hash marks of the face-off circle they're also going to be yelling at the the players that yeah it's an icing you can chase it down or no it's not hybrid icing had a little bit of controversy coming in some did like it some didn't like it I think it makes the game safer for the players no more Curtis Foster, Tory Mitchell collisions in the end boards. I prefer 100% fossil fuel icing, personally. <laughs> well, the hybrids are so expensive. Here's Burroughs now. Canucks three on two across the line. Far side and the shot wide as Burroughs set up Daniel Sedin. And it's Daniel again to Henrik. The Twins go to work. And a good defensive play by Marlowe to get it away from Daniel, but it's relayed back toward the net, but wide. And now Couture turns, looks up ice, and sends it across for Boyd. They'll just chip it deep while the Sharks execute a defense chain. Saturday night, the Sharks with another division game, and boy, these division games are huge now. Of course, the Canucks part of the Pacific now. Phoenix in here on Saturday night. As Brent Burns wheels it deep for Hurdle to Thornton, but batted away from him by Richardson. Back for Joe. The Sharks captain finds Burns open, and it's blocked in front. That one hit Edler. I think Edler tried to get away from it. <laughs> I would. 
Uh oh, Braun reversing, lost it. Santorelli's pass to Booth, and Niemi with his biggest stop of the game, and now a scrum as Hurdle gets involved with Santorelli. Well, I don't mind. I don't mind that little scrum right there. Brad Richardson takes a nasty whack at Antti Niemi after Niemi, Niemi had made the save. A phantom reverse picked off by Santorelli. Classic has to recover. Here comes the whack right there. A couple of whacks by Richardson going to the whistle, maybe a little bit afterward. In that situation, Brett, I don't mind the guys pushing and shoving. Yeah, you got to get in there and protect your goaltender, no doubt about that. And, and Braun does a nice job. And I like the fact that Hurdle got in there for a young kid and making himself known in front of the net. Nice for a young kid like that. Yep. Get involved right away. Brad Richardson with a brash style as we came to know his play as a member of the Los Angeles Kings. And my guess is that Tortorella is going to like the way he plays. Yes, he is. That was a good pickup for the Vancouver Cubs. A lead pass for Marlowe. He's got it in stride. Drops it. Kennedy can't get it back to Marlowe. Now at the line, it's Vlasic. He wheels back and Tanev blocks the wrister. Handler. Can't keep it away from Marlowe. The pass in front for Kennedy gets by him. Vlasic, he'll wheel it back for Logan Couture behind the net. To Marlowe, off his skate, and the shot hits the boot of Edler. Braun jumps in. The Sharks defense, very active in the preseason. We figure that to continue here in the regular campaign as Kennedy fires it to the net. Luongo will catch it and hold it. Just hold it there for a second, guys, as we're going to show Patrick Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe is just going to jip, jump in and get after the puck. Watch the stick lift. Quick stick by Patrick Marlowe and Chris Dana. Off the boards, indirect pass, a little stick lift. Use your feet. That is a pretty skilled little play by Patrick Marlowe, even though he made it look really easy. Well, you hear so much about the Sharks' aging core from yeah. the national and, well, Canadian hockey media especially. Patrick Marlowe, Joe Thornton, of course, and Dan Boyle are referring to. I like to think of all three of those guys as dilts. Dads, I'd like on my team. <laughs> those guys have still got a lot of gas in the tank. Yes, they do. Boyle at 37 and Thornton and Marlowe each at 34. Well, and also, Brett, I love the, like, Dan Boyle to me is a gamer. Joe Thornton's a gamer. Patrick Marlowe is a gamer. Talking to Mike Babcock, head coach of the Detroit Red Wings this summer, we talked about Patrick Marlowe in glowing terms about how good he is. Really, when you look at those three guys, Brett, those aren't three, three guys that you can just turn your nose up at if they're three of your leaders. Well, possibly Hall of Famer someday, all yeah. three of them. So, you know, they've, all of them on one team is nice to see. Wingles back on it in the Vancouver zone. The Canucks ahead 1-0 on a Jason Garrison power play goal back in the first period. An almost too many men on the ice situation for the Sharks. The Demers back and over to Scott Hannon. From center, Thomas Hurdle slaps it in. And they'll whistle that one down. Log on to CSNCalifornia.com and click on Sharks In-Game Live, presented by eSurance. Enhance your in-game experience on your computer, your smartphone, or tablet. You can follow the action on the ice like never before. In-depth stats, up to the second box scores, and you can join the social buzz with other Sharks fans. Presented by eSurance at CSNCalifornia.com. And a redo on the face-off. Sharks had the edge in the circle in that first period. 52% to 48 over the Canucks. Vancouver's got it this time. Daniel Sedin with it. Chased down by Hannon. Centers it. Niemi got his stick out on it up to Hurdle. Perfect awareness by Antti Niemi. Use his stick to block the pass. Burns and Thornton over the line. They're able to stay on side. Now back beyond the reach of Joe Thornton. Here's Alex Burrows with the Twins. Daniel. Sets it up for Henrik. His shot knocked down by Niemi. Loose puck in the crease. Boyle there, and he steered it back toward Niemi. It came loose as the whistle blew. Nice awareness there by Niemi. He knew it hit him in the shoulder and rolled off of him. He does a nice job of finding it behind him and cradles it before anybody could swat that putt in. Right puck in. There it is right there. He does a nice job of finding it in the crease, off the shoulder. It's good play by the Vancouver Canucks. Good execution there. Nice play by Niemi. A lot of movement by the Vancouver Canucks coming in on that attack. Three on two crossing. Late guy coming in and crossing again. The Sharks defense stayed in their lanes. That kind of helps kind of delay that attack if you can. As you said, Niemi with the, the extra effort on the save. The Jardins pass picked off by Hamus and the Canucks back on it. Mike Santorelli, one of the newcomers to Vancouver this year. 
chipped up for Desjardins. He's got one man back. It's Bieksa. Desjardins off the outside of the goal post. It bounces off Luongo's pad. And now he's down in the crease without a stick. Play continues up the ice as David Booth brings it ahead for Vancouver with a wrister through the crease. Bieksa checked by Shepard. Bieksa got the stick up a little high. Now James Shepard for the Sharks as it's fired wide by Santarelli. Another chance for the Canucks is Ryan Stanton, recently picked up on waivers from Chicago. Added to the Canuck lineup here on opening night, number 18. Here's Bieksa. 16-10, the Sharks have had no shots on goal in this first period through the first four and a half minutes plus. Well, that last flurry that saw the puck come off of Luongo was pretty dangerous. Didn't count as a shot. Pavelski, good back check there by Dale Week. Yeah, the Sharks have been executed very well in the neutral zone because of the back check and the back pressure by the Vancouver Canucks. And that allows the defense to stay up because they're trusting their forwards to come back hard and they jam up the neutral zone. Makes it tough to make those passes. Wingles needs two passes to get it out. Canucks have it right back again as the attack is shut down. Kessler, that's in front of the net. Hansen there, but cleaned up by Vlasic. Now Pavelski, he'll wrist it from center. Sharks will change him up. Higgins, but he's beaten to it by Demers. Up for Thomas Hurdle, back to Demers. Now Hannon, nicely to Burns. Up for Thornton, but he can't catch it. Good play by Hurdle coming back, gets the attack going. Burns shot, scores! Brent Burns ties it up with the first Sharks goal of the season. Canucks doing an excellent job in the neutral zone. Brent Hennigan, the San Jose Sharks, Joe Thornton, Thomas Hurdle, Brent Burns really took advantage of the turnover that Joe started in the neutral zone. Good transition opportunity and finish. Well, you talk about the finish. What a short side shot by Brent Burns. He can shoot the puck. One of the things we talked about in training camp, how this guy is going to be dangerous playing with Joe Thornton. Going to get a chance to shoot the puck. Gets one there and buries it. Thomas Hurdle will get his first National Hockey League point as he made a nice play to help keep that puck alive up near the Vancouver blue line. Brent Burns with his first of the year from 19-year-old Thomas Hurdle and Joe Thornton. You roll this forward, gang, and I'll just keep it rolling. Watch the play by Joe Thornton. Watch the stick. Stick gets in there. That creates the turnover. Quick pass as Brent Burns is jump, jumping up to the zone. Sorry. A little excited myself right there. And then finishes it off with a nice shot, as you mentioned. But the stick play by Joe Thornton starts that whole process rolling. The fans have jumped now. They're coming alive. 1-1 here in the second period. At SAP Center of San Jose, we're glad you're along for the season opener for the Sharks and the Canucks here on Comcast Sportsnet California. Randy Hahn, Drew Remenda, Brett Hedekin, Brody Brazil. Our first of many, many telecasts. Here's Burroughs. Gets it back, and he hit the goal post. Oh, that was a nice play. Holy mackerel, that was a nice play. Marlowe can't clear the zone, but now following his couture, had Marlowe at the line, couldn't thread the needle. Patrick seemed to be out of gas there. And I think you can credit Kevin Bieksa with that scoring chance because of his physical play in the neutral zone. Now Wingles back for the Sharks, and he'll be able to clear it out. Stanton controlling it center. 1-1, Garrison on a power play in the first. Brent Burns with the Sharks' first goal of the season here moments ago in this second period. Tied up at the line. Banged ahead by Matt Nieto. Stanton on the reverse. Nieto follows, trying to get it away. He's causing problems down there in the corner. Irwin with a chance to keep it alive. Now Pavelski had it knocked off his stick, but it comes to Nieto. A nice little move through Richardson. Pavelski out of his glove, back to his forehand. Pavelski, far side, slap shot, save, rebound through the goal, crease by Wingles. Back comes Boot. He's got Santarelli wide on his left. Boot's shadowed by Boyle. David Booth up top. Edler wrist shot. That deflects off Wingles wide. Kessler back for the Canucks. Santarelli 
to Edler, to Garrison, and a glove save by Niemi. The beastly Brent Burns. A nice job here by Justin Braun, stepping up in the neutral zone. Takes care of Sedin, but who comes following up? Bieksa knocks him down on the ground there, on the ice, and then just another two-on-one. Burles over to Sedin, Henrik back over to Burles, off the post, and just a great execution right there. And Joe Pavelski with a nice little skating move. The one-time shot from the point. Tommy Wingles works his way to the front, but just comes close as well, just missing the front of the net. But you're right, Kevin Bieksa in the neutral zone, being aggressive, exactly what John Tortorella, his coach, warns. Kessler's backhander is blocked, and the Sharks come through center again with the top line on. Burns with Hurdle and Thornton. Cannon couldn't advance it past center. Chris Higgins, the ending the save, and the rebound comes clear to Thornton, but the net's off behind. We'll have a delayed penalty against Kessler. Vancouver. Here's Thornton on the attack. Joe Thornton, he's trapped. We might have two We're penalties. Have two. We're going to have two penalties. One is going to be to Kessler, I do believe, for goalie interference, and then a trip. On Joe Thornton, it's a five on three. John Tortorella and Mike Sullivan looking at each other and they know it's coming. Here's the first penalty, shot towards the net. Going in to the goalie, goaltender contact by Kessler. Shot, chance, Kessler and Hurdle going into the net, knocks on the Yemi and the next play coming back, Joe Thornton. Garrison gets the trip on Joe Thornton. And the Sharks get a huge five-on-three opportunity as in the Bay Alarm penalty box getting a little crowded for the Vancouver Canucks. What a move there by Joe Thornton. Right at the blue line. Garrison got it in his feet, worked it around him. Garrison had no chance but to take him down. And just a great play by Jason Joe Thornton. Two minutes for of course, this is all John Tortorella's fault. He told us this morning it was very important for the Canucks to stay out of the penalty box. He jinxed it. Yeah, I'm sure he did. Yeah. You know what? Bring that up after the game of John. I'd, I'd like to see his, his answer to you. Well, we know he has a sense of humor about that type of stuff with the media. <laughs> so the five on three for the Sharks for the full two minutes. Marlowe to Boyle. Up front, Pavelski, Couture, and Thornton. Pavelski behind the net. Thornton to Marlowe. The shot blocked by Burroughs. That's he played by Burroughs. Now Couture operating up top. Back over to Boyle. Pavelski off his skate. To Boyle. Back to Pavelski. Across. Tipped by Amuse. Now Couture. His shot wide. And it's all the way up to center and beyond. Brent from up here. That looked really close. Well, he picked that far corner. He was mad at himself for missing the net on that one. Back in quickly to Thornton. Slows down, sets up, tries to go across the crease. Hamus dug in and blocked it. Higgins clears it. The Sharks have been a little tentative here. They shot the puck with abandon when they had five on fours. But I, a little reluctant here. I don't mind that on a five on three, though. I don't mind taking the time and trying to set up a couple of really good chances. Fair enough. Marlowe. I mean, you're not be right. Boyle. That's blocked in front. Boyle again. Pavelski. And he missed it wide off the heel of his stick. Thornton to Boyle. Down to 40 seconds. He switches up with Marlowe. Thornton. Looks off. Gets it to Pavelski. Settles it. Along go the same. Just had to settle if he, if he would have been able to one time that, it probably was in. Pavelski comes off the board. Steers it to Boyle. 20 to go. Into the slot, Hamus again with the block, far side shot, along with the save, and he reaches out to clean up the rebound. Brett, why don't you break the tie? What do you think on five on three? Shoot more or the type of passing that, that I was talking about? Well, I think early on, I like what you were saying there, Drew. You have to be able to just set up that one play. They worked a great, beautiful play behind the net, one that you see yeah. them work on a lot in practice at the top of the, uh, the, the dot there, a shot on goal. It's great, great save by Luongo. Then you work it in around the top, try a little uh, umbrella up top, get some more shots to the front with two guys in front. So they're trying a few different things. They just didn't have success. But you got to, I think, on those shots, once a guy starts to wind up, get there, right? Get there for the rebound. Absolutely. Burroughs wins the draw from Kennedy. 
Demers trying to get to it, does, but it caroms back to Burroughs, down the ice it goes, and as it skips past Niemi wide of the net, that is going to do it for a full two-minute five-on-three. The Sharks manage three shots on goal, and it stays a 1-1 game. And now both teams want to take this momentum from their sides and see if they can make it work to their advantage. Big kill by the Canucks, but good chances by the Sharks. Burns, Rister, Luongo juggles and holds. Sharks power play 0 for 4 tonight. Still 1-1. Mark Edward, you look at the shot clock, you look at the scoring opportunities, you guys are heavily favored. How do you get that to translate to the scoreboard in this game? Uh, we got to find some more guys to go in front of his eyes. Uh, he's one of the best goalies in the league. If he sees it, he's going to stop it. We have a lot of shots, but we need somebody in front. You guys capitalized on neutral zone play with Thornton starting the turnover and Burns getting the goal. Is it good enough, though, in the middle third of the ice for you guys right now? Uh, we, well, it's, we're tied, but uh, five on three. They got the momentum right now. We got to go get it back. Mark Edward, thank you so much. Randy and Drew, back up to you guys. Great point by Mark Edward Vlasic. you got to get in front of Roberto Luongo's eyes. Every goaltender in this league is so good. Roberto Luongo, as he said, Mark Edward, that's one of the best in the league. you got to start screening him. Luongo went through quite a summer after Corey Schneider was traded. He fired his agent, stopped working with goaltending coach Francois Allaire, changed everything up. He's been good for the Cucks in this game so far with 21 saves. I was so impressed with Roberto Luongo last year, how he handled the turmoil. He was a total professional, 100%. And frankly, I'm not sure why Alain Vigneault in the first, in the first round changed goaltenders back to Schneider. Because before game three, Alain Vigneault said, well, it's not, we're not behind two to nothing because of goaltending. So why just switch them? Totally agree, Drew. Reading is cool, presented by Comerica Bank. Presents the in-game book drive. Help us spread the excitement and importance of reading by bringing a new or gently used children's book for grades K through 6 to the Sharks game here on Saturday against Phoenix or on the 8th against the Rangers. These books will be distributed to participating schools and all donors will be entered into an in-game raffle for autographed Sharks merchandise. That's coming up Saturday night and next Tuesday against the Rangers. Bring your children's books. Miami slowing it down for Scott Hannon. We're past the halfway point of the hockey game. 8.54 to go here in the second. It's a 1-1 tie. On goals by Jason Garrison and Brent Burns. Santorelli to Edler. He misfires and it comes right to Wingle. Through center and Wingles dumps it to the corner. Chasing after it with Garrison. They collide. Garrison gets a stick to it first. But they're supporting is Shepard. Back to that same corner, Santorelli for Adler. Wingles up top, Vlasic changing sides to Justin Braun. Right through the middle, wanted a tip from Wingle. Here's Richardson with some speed up to the sharp line. Daniel for Santorelli with the Canucks on a line chain. Daniel Sedin, BX is gonna one-time this and it's wide. Now Henry. Behind the net, we've got a whistle on the play. Side. Maybe too many men. I, swear, I just want to show you Mike Santarelli. This is some great back pressure by Mike Santarelli. As the play starts to go through the other, to the other way for the Van, for this Vancouver Canucks on the back check. Look at Santarelli track that puck. That allows the defense to stay up and forces Tommy Wingles to dump it in. And we're getting short, uh, too many men on the ice there, Brent. You are correct, yeah, sir. Yeah. So then the cycle starts for the Sharks. As, a little bit of a change got out there early, and the Sharks get back on the power play. They're 0 for 4 right now. It would be great, obviously, for the Sharks to get one going in the net. Now on the 5 on 4, Brett, is this when you start just teeing it up? Yeah, boy, they had a lot of success there, like you guys talked about in the first period when it was 5 on 4, getting pucks to the front of the net. Let's see if they can do that here on this one. So, so the bench minor for too many to the Canucks at 11.59. Santarelli comes over to serve it for the Canucks, and the Sharks looking for a power play goal here. They're 0 for 4. They've had... Their fair share of chances, especially when they were five on four. Let's see if they do what Mark Edward Vlasic talked about, getting in the eyes of Roberto Luongo. Boyle with two men on him to Thornton. Back through for Couture, got away from him. Boyle loads up, fires to Pavelski, and he just couldn't handle that pass cleanly. Marmo up top, Pavelski fires, and Luongo the stick saves. Sees it all the way. Boyle for Thornton. 
Jones. Up front for Couture. Can't steer it to the net. Now Marlow. Pavelski fires. Save by Luongo. Rebound. Loose and the Canucks with a chance to clear. The Exa got it up the boards but not out. He comes in. Moves the pile as he knocks. Fork aside. Boyle loads up. Fires and Luongo the save. No rebound. And now a cross check thrown by Kessler. That Pavelski who was down on the ice, but he's going to get away with it. That always astounds me when a referee is looking right at it. When a guy is on the ice, he cross checks somebody. Doesn't matter what team you're on, one way or the other. And the referee just absolutely ignores it. <laughs> Traffic in front, but. Brad Hennekin, is there enough traffic in front right now? Well, you talked about how Luongo can see everything right there. Nobody's in front of him. Joe's got to get in front of his eyes, make him so he cannot see that puck. Here's another one, another opportunity where nobody's in front. Easy save for Luongo. Faceoff comes out. Knocking it down is Daniel Sedin, blocked by Demers. And we're out on this penalty kill as the Twins getting some time on the PK here. We talked about that in the first period. That's a change. See if Tortorella continues with that theme all season. Is certainly the Twins are going to play more minutes if that's the case. Irwin to Burns. Now Kennedy and his pass goes astray, but it's kept in. Burns fires. That's blocked by Tana. That hurt. And it's caught up in his gear, poked out by the Sharks. Irwin quickly back over to Demers. Now Matt Irwin who's got a booming shot. Hurdle's going to take a drive. Goes off Tanev right back to him. Out of the corner. Back for Hurdle. On to Irwin. Matt Irwin chipping it by the attacking Higgins. And the Canucks, Chris Tanev able to get it down and out with 10 to go. Right idea there by Irwin. Just pulled it just a little bit too hard off the boards. Power play time running down for the Sharks. They'll go to 0-5 with the man advantage here tonight. Still a 1-1 game. Matt Nieto against Jason Garrison. And use. And the Canuck come ahead. Here's Kessler. He's got Santorelli. Forced wide by Hannon to the net. Saved by Nieto. Penalty. Sharks going to get one. Going to be an interference call against Matt Nieto. And he'll go to the penalty box for the first time in. This right at the top of the screen, Matt Nieto on Alexander Burroughs. Burroughs goes down. Nieto is getting his first penalty in his National Hockey League career. And now let's look at the, look at the Coors light, cold hard facts. Well, neither of these teams has won a Stanley Cup, but boy, they have both been excellent in the regular season over the last decade. Since 2001-2, Vancouver behind only Detroit with 485 regular season wins and only six back of the Canucks, the Sharks, 479 wins since 0-1-0-2. That's a lot of wins. Oh, you got to be able to clear pucks to get the opportunity fan right there. Where you have to battle. Tied up along the boards, and Pavelski just got a high stick from Kessler. Kessler. This time, Kessler will go to the penalty box. I think it might be for roughing. Yeah, I think you're right. Kessler comes over. I thought it might be elbowing. The battle along, and Kessler comes in. Here it is. That's an elbow in the back of the head. Bounces Pavelski's head off the glass. And we've got four on four. A uh, terrible penalty to take if you're Kessler. I mean, you just cannot do that. You're on the power play. Five minutes to go, you waited for this opportunity and he just took it away from his teammates right well, there. Well, he figured he got away with a cross check earlier. Might <laughs> as well keep on going. So, four on four play here in the second period with five and a half to go in a 1-1 game. Pavelski got to that puck first, but a good read by Edler. He and Marno bow as it's cleared back ahead by Vlasic. Kessler for roughing at 14.30 right after. Matt Nieto went in for interference. So the Sharks will have a very brief power play, potentially, once Nieto comes out. Garrison, he's checked hard by Braun as Vlasic turns. Gets his head up quickly. Over to Tommy Wingles. As he's given a shot by Henrik Sedin. Back for Vlasic, and they finally work it out. Wingles up high for Couture. Logan trying to chip it just the right pace for Vlasic, who was a little behind the play. And Dan Hanius gets a relay from the Exa, and he'll wheel it right back, and Luongo helps steer that to safety. 
Kevin Bieksa, who broke Sharks fans' hearts in 2010. Shot from the left side, Nianni handles it. Bieksa with the overtime winner in the deciding game in the conference final against the Sharks. But you know it had to sting Kevin Bieksa when all the complaining he was doing in the first round last year, and he's in the penalty box in game four, and Joe Pavelski ties the game, and then the Sharks go on to win it. Now Christopher Higgins, a potential two-on-one with David Booth. The shot saved by Niemi, and the rebound cleaned up by Byrne. Good stand up there at the end by Dan Boyle. Make sure nobody gets to the rebound. Burns lobs it toward the net over the outstretched glove of Luongo. Burns after his own rebound. Thornton to Irwin. Ahead for Hannon. Check that, it's Wingles. No, it was Hannon. It was Hannon, yeah. Deep down the left wing boards. What's he doing there? <laughs> Never ever heard that before. Burroughs trying to get to the net. And now Hannon back at the other end going coast to coast. As Nieto's out of the box, the brief power play over as Kessler's out too. Now Hansen to Burroughs. Checked by Nieto and kept in by Edler. Edler risks it for Hansen down behind the net. He's watched by Demers. Yannick Hansen, nice tight turn in traffic. Gets it out front. Wanted Santorelli, broken up, but kept in as Edler stabs at one. It's blocked in front. Here's Kessler. Diemi the save. Rebound. Covered up by Antti Niemi. And all that happens because the Sharks couldn't get out of the zone or through the neutral zone clean, and that allows the transition opportunity to come back. Santorelli wants to set up in front. Good shot block, though, by Scott Hannon, and then now it's just a battle. Are you going to be a warrior? Are you going to stay in there and battle for it? And the biggest guy battling was number 31, Antti Niemi. Yeah, a little play there by Desjardins, too. That puck is bouncing. Just throw that puck in the corner. You can retrieve it down there. You don't want to stick handle in that sort of situation. But, again, like you talked about, Drew, Nie uh, Niemi making some good stops. Yeah, a little bit cleaner coming out of the zone and through the neutral zone. You're allowed, as you talked about, play with that pace, that quickness that you want. This is Joe Pavelski now. Matt Pellick on the ice for a shift as Pavelski puts it on net. Santorelli at center. Back for Dale Weiss. Weiss. Down the right wing, taken away by Wingles. Weiss was suspended in the preseason. Number 52 for the Canucks. Or 32, rather. For a hit on Taylor Hall of the Edmonton Oilers. Cost him a couple of games in the preseason, but good to go. Not the case for Zach Cassian. He's missing tonight's game for Vancouver, along with four more for a slash on Sam Gagne, which fractured Gagne's jaw in that same game. Gagne's going to be out for a long time. It's a big loss for the Edmonton Oilers. It was a... Here's Couture. Kennedy to Marlowe. Back out front off the Canuck stick to Couture. Logan from the goal line. On to Vlasic. Braun takes it off the boards to the middle. The block before it got to Luongo. Mark Edward Vlasic. Over to Justin Braun. He'll have time for a shot. It's Justin Braun! I thought the Sharks forwards did a good job in battling to get in the Walker's eyes. Logan Couture all over the ice on this shift as well, but I love the defenseman working it back and forth. Classic, Justin Braun, great job of using each other, staying open, but getting it out to the point, getting right to the front of that, stopping right in front of Luongo's eyes where he cannot see it. That split second was all it took. Beautiful job, as you said, the D and D puck movement, but also the effort by Logan Couture to work to the front of the net. They're giving the goal to Braun, even though we thought there possibly could have been a tip in front by Couture, but it's Braun's first of the year from Vlasic and Logan Couture at 18.07, and the Sharks have their first lead of the game. Seeing that little chemistry right there from yeah. Kennedy and Logan Couture, beautiful down low, and obviously Marlowe out there as well, but just a nice little cut back, and then getting it out to the point, getting that shot off quickly, beautiful job. Dan Hamus. As the Canucks are now playing from behind. Cannon. As Hansen stumbled. Thomas Hurdle had an assist on the first sharp goal by Burns for his first NHL point in his first game. That puck's out of play onto the San Jose bench. 
Nice job there by Scott Hannon. You notice he had the puck in the corner. He didn't throw it. He stopped, let a guy come to him, bounce it off the boards. That's how you break it off, but break it out. But nice job by Scott Hannon tonight. He's done a lot of little nice plays. Brett, down low. As, as a veteran player in place to with playing defense, does the game just slow down for you or you slow down? I think you slow down. You know what to do in those cer certain circumstances, and you've been there before, and he's done a nice job tonight. You know, Sorry, I was I was uh, on the ice this summer with Mike Babcock, head coach of the Detroit Red Wings, and he kept telling the players as they were all pretty excited because Mike Babcock was out there. He says, "We want you to be quick, but we don't want you to be in a rush." Does that make sense to you? It makes perfect sense, and and that's what happens when you're a veteran defense defenseman in this league. You you don't rush out there. You take your time. You know what you're going to do when you get that puck. And it's uh, Scott Hannon proving his veteranship yeah, there. Yeah, absolutely. For Justin Braun, who played his first NHL game ever against the Canucks back in November of 2010. That's his first goal in 70 games. Goes back to February 10th of 2012, but a big one it is. Putting the Sharks in the lead here as we're down to under a minute in the second period. There's the hybrid icing call. Well, and, and having, I, I guess, you know, a young guy and a guy that actually struggled in the preseason. Justin Braun didn't play as well as he wanted to, obviously, in the preseason. But we've seen Justin before, and I know, Brett, you're a big fan of the way this young man plays. Well, it's given it the ability for the Sharks to move Brent Burns up the forward by having young defensemen like oh, Justin Braun. Oh, this is, this is a skate right here. Higgins' skate comes up as Mark Ever Vlasic pushes him. And hopefully this isn't... A huge cut here on Mark Edward Vlasic. This looked dangerous. You can see the concern on Chris Higgins' face. Strictly accidental. Gets him on the nose. Mark Edward Vlasic comes up. Watch Higgins skate. Oh, jeepers. That's, oh boy, oh boy. Thank goodness for the visor, but it does come right across the nose. It looked like a Mark Edward Vlasic. Yeah, it cut his nose a little bit on both sides of the nose. Like you said, the visor hit him there. That Brings back some bad memories on my side of it. I've been cut just like that in the chin. Oh. Skate came up exactly like that. And Mark Edward, well, we talked about the visor early in the game yeah. on the shot down low, and there was another one that saved possibly a bad cut. Oh. Those are scary. So Vlasic off for repairs as we continue here late in the second period. A chance at the side of the Sharks net for the Canucks, Ryan Kessler. Burns checked by Hansen, but he shakes it off and leaves the rough. In and off the stick of Hurdle. He goes to the corner with Tanev. We got a rough ride from the kid. Big, strong kid. Back out of play with under half a minute to go. Well, Brent Hennigan. Brent, Brent, Brent Burns. Such a beast out there. Watch this play right here, folks. This is a tough, tough play along the boards. You got to stop right there. Took, takes the hit, gets his legs moving, moves the puck, gets open. And that's what Brent Burns, why he's so dangerous, not only in the offensive zone, but the defensive zone. You cannot move this guy. Down to 27 and change here in the second period that has seen the Sharks tie it and then go ahead on goals by Burns and Braun. Booth for the Canucks. Edler loads up. That's blocked by Wingles out into the neutral zone. And now back on the stick of Justin Braun as the Sharks have to mix and match with their deep pairs here late in the period with Vlasic out. And now Shepard, as the whistle blows, collides with Edler. Nothing more will come of that with just under five ticks left. Todd McClellan trying to get some ice time for Shepard. Get him out there. Get him skating. James is a kid that's got just a lot of gusto and a lot of gas. I, I'm so impressed with what he went through in his career. And he's able to still battle and be back in the NHL. If last year, a good season. This year, he's looking for more. Or rebuilding his career after two terrible, terrible years of injuries. You talk about dedication and perseverance. Talk about number 15, James Shepard. Talk about number 32, Alex Stalock, too. He went through four oh, years of adversity, and he's back as the Sharks back up net minder tonight. That brings us to the end of the second period, and a solid one it was for the San Jose Sharks. Both their goals tonight coming in the middle frame. They lead it here 2-1. to one. Coming up, we'll check in with Ahmed Fareed with a Sportsnet Central update, and then Drew and I will be back with our very first edition of Sharpshooters. Stick around. Thank you, gentlemen. As we get set for the third period here of this 
opening game of the 82-game National Hockey League season for both the Sharks and the Canucks. And the opening week of hockey is presented by Dairy Queen. I'm a big fan. Big fan of Dairy Queen. Me too. You probably tell by my by my figure. I'm a big fan of Dairy Queen. Now you actually you look spelt. You've you've <laughs> taken care of yourself over the summer. Set to drop the puck at center ice, Joe Pavelski standing at center for the Sharks. He leads the team through two periods in the faceoff circle. The big Pavelski, 71% on draws, although he loses that one to Kessler. Top man for the Canucks has been Brad Richardson. Hasn't taken nearly as many as Pavelski, but he's also at 71. Mark Edward Vlasic back on the bench, making sure the Band-Aid's staying on. I don't know, Band-Aid, forget that. It's too tough for a Band-Aid. No band-aids in hockey, no, Drew. Real hockey players don't wear band-aids. Just get cut, come on back out, stop the bleeding. Throw, throw, a, little, throw a little crazy glue on there, you're good to go. It's a long way from your heart, kid. Good, <laughs> good to see Vlasic out there. That, that could have been so much worse oh, as he was goodness. just nicked by that skate of Chris Higgins. That was scary. Right, those, are, those are scary instances when the skate flies up. I'll talk with Canucks bench, this whole fixing going on in the ice. These teams play again next week in Vancouver. And you just get a sense this is a rivalry that's now the Canucks are in this division is just going to get better and better and better. Uh, we always say playoffs are what really builds rivalries. Two opportunities to meet the Canucks in the playoffs. The teams are one and one. And last year was a very interesting postseason for both teams. Boyle shot, blocked, but it comes right back to him off Higgins, to Matt Nieto. Nieto playing in his first NHL game, the native of Long Beach, California. Great to see another native Californian in the National Hockey League, and especially in San Jose. And a scoring chance there for Nieto. Nice play behind the net. Joe Pogelski able to get there. Nieto's played a lot in Northern California, coming up to Shark Sites and playing in all those tournaments with the travel teams. Played his college hockey at BU, came out early, and finished his hockey season last year at Worcester, the Sharks American Hockey League team, and had an impressive training camp and injuries to the likes of Rafi Torres, Martin Havlat, and Adam Burrish helped expedite his appearance here tonight in the big show. Well, what do we say? We always say for every challenge like an injury, there's an opportunity for somebody else, and here's Matt Nieto's opportunity. Icing called as Bieksa was obviously going to get to it first. Speaking of California-born players in Sharks history, Craig Cox, who scored the first ever goal in Sharks history against the Canucks, a team he played for from Southern California, outside San Diego and Chula Vista. Scott Parker, of course, from Hanford. Matt Tennyson from Pleasanton, and as we just said, Nieto from Long Beach. Great to see. High stick coming up. Daniel Sedin's getting at least two minutes as he high stick. Irwin, Matt Irwin going after the puck in the corner. Is Matt Irwin leaking a little bit? He's saying, yeah, got me in the chin. Am I bleeding? Mm, I don't think so. No blood. It'll be just two. It's the only time I imagine you wish you were bleeding, eh, Brett? Well, guys have been cut so many times on the chin, you just don't get cut there anymore. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Two minutes, two minutes high stick. Yeah. Daniel Sedin was in the penalty box when Patrick Marlowe ended the Vancouver Canucks first round hopes for advancing. A hit on Tommy Wiggles and back in the penalty box he is here. The Bay Alarm penalty box. Couture trying to redirect the Marlowe shot that's cleared by the Canucks. Despite leading, the Sharks are 0 for 6 on the power play, although one of those power play opportunities is only 12 seconds long. Marlowe again, this time wants Couture on the wing, and that came out. That'll be offside. Going back to the spring past, game four here at SAP Center. Sharks and Canucks. Sharks leading the series 3 to nothing in overtime. So Thornton shoots the puck. Patrick Marlowe crashes the net. It's a skate in the head from Logan Couture. There it is. That's it for the Vancouver Canucks in overtime. Daniel Sedin was in the penalty box on a controversial penalty call as he and Tommy Wingles went in the boards and Wingles went in awkwardly. 
That gave the Sharks the power play in the OT, and they put it away. Who would have known, but that would be the last shift for Corey Schneider, the goaltender for the Canucks, who was traded at the draft to New Jersey. He made his debut tonight for the Devils and was on the wrong end of a 3-0 score as Marc-Andre Fleury puts up a shutout in the appearance for the Penguins. I always thought the longer was the better goalie. Now Pavelski is the Sharks power play is trying to get ramped up here and having a little trouble doing so. Boyle will give it to Demers. And from center he'll get it in but it was partially blocked. Now Demers centers. He had Kennedy there but he couldn't get it on his forehand. Almost worked out for him. Tyler Kennedy. Thornton endeavoring to get it back to him. Now at the point, it's Demers. Irwin back to Demers. Across for Kennedy. He'll wrist it to the net. Save by Luongo and clear. Tyler Kennedy gets the puck. Best idea you've got if you're one of the other four guys on the ice, get to the net because he's shooting it. Oh, that's not going to pass. Demers up to Brent Burns, who has one of the two Sharks goals tonight, along with Justin Braun. Burns into the zone with authority. And Thomas Hurdle to Braun. And Irwin. Penalty's over. Sedin on the ice. Sharks still with it in the Vancouver zone. And Daniel able to back check it away from Kennedy. Canucks to center. Burrows there. And he'll swing it in over the blue line. Tied up with Braun now. And an offside whistle as Hurdle runs into Burrows. And they have to be pulled apart. Well, the A's and Tigers start their playoff series tomorrow. And this postseason, Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area presents Sportsnet Central October Quest. Comprehensive coverage every night, plus Kate Longworth and CSNCalifornia.com's Joe Stiglitz traveling with the team. That's A's October Quest, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Get it through? I got it. October Quest, your quest for the Major League World Series title. Get it. Henrik Sedin give it a shove by Justin Braun as they tie up in the corner. Just over four minutes gone here in the third period in a one goal game. David Booth healthy again for the Canucks. Now Daniel checked by Braun. And he keeps his feet moving. Braun continues to engage him. Out to the point, Stanton, a quick little give to Daniel. Now Henrik, back to Stanton, and his one-timer, a weak one, off the backboards, back to Daniel. Stanton broke his stick on the shot, quick change by the Canucks. Now Henrik, checked by Braun, who wrangles over to the other side. And we've got a holding penalty coming up here to Justin Braun. So the Canucks will get an opportunity on the power play here as Braun will go off. Justin Braun, you see the stick come off, or the hand come off the stick, I should say. The right hand grabs, and then basically it's just put all your weight on the back of the man, and down he goes, and Justin Braun gets the deuce for holding. So a fourth power play for Vancouver, although they had a very brief one as well. Their only goal coming with the power play back in the first period from Jason Garrison. Here's a two-on-one short-headed. Pavelski with Marlowe. Pavelski shoots and Luongo eats it up. Second great short-handed chance tonight for Joe Pavelski. Terrific support by Joe Pavelski as Scott Hannon off the faceoff rims it out. Pavelski looks off, tries to get Luongo to bite, maybe going over to Patrick Marlowe and Pavelski does the right thing, shoots the puck. Well, Luongo didn't even bite on the look. Yeah, Canucks did a good job sealing off that passing lane to Marlowe. Pavelski, it looked from our angle, had a little choice but to shoot. Vancouver on the power play. Kevin Bieksa carrying the puck across his own blue line to center. Boyle with Hannon back defensively. Sorted out nicely, and Marlowe will chip it past Bieksa to get it out. Good work by Kevin Bieksa. He kept battling and whacking at that puck with his dick. Kept it from being another break for the Sharks. Cannon gave it up to Hansen. 
Now Yannick Hansen. He of the new four-year contract for the Canucks. Bieksa across the crease and wide. Back to Hansen. Hansen gets it back. Now Higgins moves into the slot. Hansen trying to find him. Instead bumps it back to Hanyu. The Exa loads up. That's blocked by Pavelski. And Marlowe's going to chip it up for him. But the big Pavelski out of gas. Yeah, that's really a big long shift. Out there for the first, what, minute and seven seconds, Brett? Yeah, I can see Pavelski. He, he wanted his legs to go, but they just weren't moving. So he went to the bench instead. My thing. Henrik Sedin with 40 to go on the Vancouver power play. Daniel delays. Now around to Dan or Henrik. Kessler picks it up on the far side. Back for Henrik Sedin. He'll soft chip it back into the corner. His brother arrives in time. Dan or Henrik out for Kessler, but just behind him. Shots clear it down. 20 to go on the power play. Good pressure there from Couture, but the Canucks escape. Kennedy gets a stick on it. Kessler able to control it. Off the referee. And now Couture will wrist it down, and that'll be it for the Vancouver man advantage. Great job by Couture there, coming down low. Working with Dan Boyle to get that down 200 feet. And right up through the face-off dots. That's where you put it when you got the chance. Booth gets there first for the Canucks. Now Hamuse. And a shot by Garrison, even with the wrist shot. It's a devastating shot, but why? Miami is saved. Out to Thornton. Thornton to Hurdle. He'll chip it past Hamu. Luongo up. Sealed off by Thornton. Hamu's reversing it. Booth slides it ahead for Santarelli at center. Braun works, able to change up on the far side of the ice. Desjardins out there with Shepard. Here's Vlasic now. His wrist shot goes wide. On the right point, it's still Braun. He's looking to get off on a change if he can. Shepard leaves it. Nieto. And a tripping penalty coming up to Nat Nieto as he upends Ryan Kessler. Higgins back the other way and we'll get the whistle. And Matt Nieto will get his second minor penalty of the night. Yep. Nieto picks up two. The Canucks back on the power play. And I asked him what he was hoping for from his team and our Geico quote of the game. Because I asked him, are you looking for accountability? Are you looking for just X and O's? you let him play? He said, no, we're looking for accountability. We planted the seeds right now, the foundation for our game. And if they start wandering off on their own, we'll pull those weeds quickly. Which, with Todd McClellan, when you're talking to him about anything, You've got to be there and stay with him because he'll talk about gardening. He will talk about parenting. He'll liken coaching hockey to a lot of different things. And I love that quote. We'll pull their weeds rather quickly. That means you better make sure you stick with the system. Here's a shot by Daniel Sedin. And my apologies to Matt Nieto. It was James Shepard who picked up the tripping minor on Kessler. So it's Shepard in the sin bin at 8.03. Pavelski with the clear. Canucks power play one for four. And the Sharks have had excellent short-handed chances tonight, especially Joe Pavelski. Here's Daniel. Edler, far side, the big shot by Gibson, stopped and cleared by Demers. Big clear by Demers because it was right there for Kessler in front. Edler goes up Whoa. high, and that's up into the netting. Kessler gets dumped in front by Scott Hannon. Scott Hannon added a few chirps as well. Kessler in front, shot. It's going to sit there a little bit. Kessler turns, but there goes Jason Demers in. Clears the puck out of trouble. And Kessler now and Scott Hannon having a little argument, a discussion, a debate, a rather verbose talking back and forth. Kessler stays out there. He got up very slowly. Controlled by the Canucks off the draw. Edler, a soft chip to Daniel. Good battle in front. Look at this battle in front. Henry. Now Daniel back for his brother. For Kessler in front, and he chips it high over the net. And Hannon having himself a great shift, clears the puck. And now here's Tyler Kennedy. Kennedy in on goal with Pavelski, but he lost the handle. 
Nice play there by Edler. There's a stick laying on the ice that interrupted that little play of him cutting in the middle. Henrik Sedin gains the line. Sends it deep. Kessler will be in a battle there with Braun. Gloved down off the glass by Daniel. Marlowe with a backhand chip just gets it out. And the Sharks are down to 20 more seconds to kill. Brent, that was a great job by Braun and Vlasic working to make that quick little breakout pass so they could, Sharks forwards could get it out. These two are having a really strong game, particularly Braun. I've really liked his third period tonight, making some good defensive plays, taking the body strong. And use Canucks on the power play for a couple seconds longer as we're past the halfway point of the third. Out comes Shepard, but the Canucks control. In front, Niemi with his save of the night off Higgins. Great save. Nice set up by the Canucks. A great save by Antti Niemi. Big hip check by Bieksa on Shepard. Canucks get the puck back, but it's still 2-1 after the excellent penalty killing. And the great save by Niemi. Here's Joe Thornton battling to get to the loose puck. He's got Hurdle with him. Hamu's able to get to it first. Hurdle trying to take it away from Higgins. to the point. Irwin at blast and Luongo with the catch and hold. Wow. Down to 9-18 here in the third. Down slides in the second effort with the stick. Takes away a 2-on-1 or 2-on-2 opportunity shorthanded for the Sharks. But I like what you were talking about, Prep. Hannon battling in front and the defense going post to post. Another face-off win for Vancouver. They've been very good in the face-off circle tonight. Pavelski, leaned on by Edler, he scoots through the check, but then Tanev comes in, takes it off him, up for Richardson, who's bumped off the puck by Windows. And now back into the shark zone. 30-20, the shots on goal in favor of San Jose. Windows chips it in. Nieto's there, so is Edler for the Canucks with Tanev. On to Richardson, and back out again. A nice little play by Pavelski coming back in the neutral zone. Beautiful little, play, little pass. Now Kennedy with some speed down the wing into the corner against Hanyus and chops it away. Braun waiting on it. Into the feet of Couture. He backhands it to Kennedy. Milo knocked off the puck there. And now Henrik City. To see a lot of the twins here in the third period with the Canucks down by a goal. Turn over there and Henrik the beneficiary, but the Sharks Logan Couture able to recover and get it away. Garrison, two four checkers in deep for the Sharks. Hurdle just unable to keep it in at the point against Burroughs. Now Kessler has to wait for his line mates to get back on side. Does. But Boyle with it, and he'll safely play it to center for Burns. A lead pass for Thornton, who backhands in Burns' direction. Burns knocks down the man in the way. There's Stanton. Burns after it. Fiexa leans in on him, but Burns' effort keeps the puck alive, only to have it go past Boyle. And now Irwin shoots it off the board to hit the linesman, comes into the Canucks zone, and Burles will get it back for Vancouver. Things getting a little tighter out there here in a one-goal game in the third. They certainly are. They certainly are. Now it's that, that time where it's really simplify your game, isn't it, Brett? Yeah, just keep players to the outside in the defensive zone. Get it deep at the, at the far blue line. Help me in. That's had a preseason game in Phoenix that I know you were at, Drew, where they didn't feel they closed out the game very effectively with a sizable lead, and they ended up having to hang on and win by one. And I'm sure some lessons were learned that they were being stressed now in this situation here, although it's a much different scenario with the Sharks ahead by just one. Took those opportunities to, to learn and, and to coach and teach. Kennedy and Couture battle on the near boards. Richardson has his stick hacked out of his hands. Kennedy to the net. A rebound chance in front for Logan Couture, and Luongo got a piece of it. Tied up. Officials are going to let them dig it out. And they do as Couture is able to bat it down. But now the Canucks in transition come back up the ice. Daniel goes offside with Richardson. 
Good opportunity for the Sharks. This is just a, another battling chance, another workman-like effort. Logan Couture fights off the check, sides to the net on the forehand for the rebound opportunity that Tyler Kennedy created. Just the Berlongo kicks the leg out, just goes wide. Well, you talk about being smart too, Drew, and it was all set up by Logan Couture. Getting that puck deep on the half wall. Didn't try to do something cued out near the blue line in between there. Gets it down low and it creates this offensive chance. Thornton's line up against the Richardson line here. Burns will take this draw, but it's won by the Canucks. Ham used over to his partner, Tanev. He's flattened there by Hurdle. And Hurdle, as you see, 6-2-2-10, not afraid at 19 years of nope. age in his first NHL game to play physically, be involved. Brett, what do you think? Now you're watching Thomas Hurdle down by the ice. What do you think of his game so far? I I've liked him. I've liked him, too. And you know what? Guys are testing him early in this game. Yes. Guys are hitting him after the whistle, kind of rubbing their the glove in the face. They're testing him a little bit. And right there, six minutes to go, he finishes a nice check and knocks the guy over. Cam, you shot, tip, far side, Kessler was there, watched by Thornton, and he couldn't get a stick on the puck. Ryan Kessler gets it into the corner, wants Burroughs, but Irwin's there for the Sharks, Higgins intercepts. Irwin trying to get it back for San Jose, and does, and Hurdle will slide it over to Dan Boyle. Boyle with Thomas Hurdle. Hurdle working down that left side, Boyle comes into support, and gets it deep as Hurdle will head off. Al Higgins, trouble there on the four check. Couture, Marlow, scores! Patrick Marlow, and the Sharks lead three to one. How many times can we say this? Watch the stick of Logan Couture. How good of a four check is this? Comes back. Now, Logan Couture, great stick coming back. Now, you've got that quick pass and a quick shot. Logan Couture makes that happen, coming back out on the four check. Terrific stick. He looks fresh before he even gets the puck. Knows what he's going to do. Beautiful play. You called it there, Drew. It was his stick on the ice, creates that turnover, but nowhere to put the puck before he got it. Gets it over to Marlow with a quick release. And how many times have we said that? What a quick release from Patrick Marlow. First goal of the year for Marlow. Couture gets the assist. His second on the night. As he set up Braun's go-ahead goal. And now the Sharks with a goal of insurance. Five minutes to go here in the third period. A 3-1 score. Daniel can't catch the long pass. Braun, his head turned around, sends it up through the zone. Intercepted. And the Emmy with a save off Edler's blast. Couture takes his time, gets this ahead. Here's Marlow again, but he just lost it due to the efforts of Bieksa. Santorelli settles it for the Canucks. Push him in, Wingy! Push him in! We've got four and a half minutes to try and tie this game up. Deep side, GD! Deep side, GD! Out of the way, right there! Lassen. Cut earlier by the skate of Higgins, digging in there in the corner. Here's a slap shot that's blocked. A two-on-one and a break now for Wingles. Wingles to Desjardins. Back for Wingles. There's going to be a penalty coming up, but look at how Andrew Desjardins stays with the play. Push it away. Go to the net if you're Tommy Wingles. Brett, I love the fact that what Tommy Wingles stopped at the net. I said the same thing right here. Hit the brakes. Don't go by the goal line right there. And sure enough, the puck comes to him. He pays a price, but he'll gladly pay the price on that one by the exit to put that in the back of the net. Two Sharks goals in 18 seconds to blow this one open. That play happens out of the zone. The Sharks are able to get in front of some pucks. But that's such an important message for kids. If you're playing hockey out there, you're going to the net. Like you said, Brett, hit the brakes when you're in front. 
A Canuck shot saved by Niemi. And the rebound handled by Pellet. Who's out there for a shift here in the third. Now back beyond center, it's Stanton. As Wingles gets credit for the goal, his first from Dujardin at 15-57. And the Sharks, after falling behind 1-0 halfway for the first period, have scored four unanswered goals in this game. And this place is buzzing, Drew. Yeah, it is. They're jumping. They were excited before the game. A lot of it, of course, because the San Jose Sharks are back, and the Sharks have the best, most loyal, passionate fans in the National Hockey League. But also because the Vancouver Canucks are here. And nobody likes them in this part of the world. Marlowe and Wingle score 18 seconds apart, and the Sharks have a three-goal lead. We're to it here. It is time for our Toyota game summary. Canucks got the first goal on the power play. Jason Garrison, he's got a big shot. We saw it there. But then the Canucks saw the Sharks go to work in the first Brent first Burns, then Justin Braun, and then in 18 seconds. First Marlowe. And then a great combination. The Shark to Wingles, who paid the price, but oh, it felt nice. And the Sharks have a 4-1 lead here in the third period. Four different goal scorers. Couture leading the way with two assists. Well, you mentioned Couture right there, Randy, and I, I really felt like that second period is when that line seemed to just yeah. rev it up just a notch, and it just seemed to take over this game, and Logan Couture showing his leadership again at the start of this season. I'm sure John Tortorella is interested to see what his team brings here on the road, down by three with three minutes to go. Yeah, John's in an interesting situation. He, he's got to be pushing his guys, demanding of his guys, but also he's got to play a little bit patient because he admitted a thing. He's not sure really what he's got, not really sure sure about the guys who they are and how they play and how they're pushed well he was asked today if he had decided on his alternate captains as this one skips across the crease and Bieksa, Kessler and Daniel Sedin are wearing the A's tonight he said I don't know these guys I need some time to figure out who my alternates are going to be so for right now it's status quo as Luongo makes another save and the Sharks keep on pouring it on here in the third we've got a penalty yeah, yeah, penalty coming up. yeah so John John Tortorella is in a, in a a difficult situation for a coach a team that people are expecting to do great things because you've got an excellent coach behind the bench. Legal check to the head. Jason Garrison going in for an illegal check to the head as he goes in the corner to finish the check and you can see that coach Tortorella is not really fun of that it's just the tail end as hurdle gets hit and there's the high stick just a clip I think it was just before that when Garrison finished the check on Thomas hurdle or Tomas hurdle I'm calling him Thomas. Okay, I am too. Good. Yep. I, yeah, good. It, Thanks. Until he tells me differently, and yep. I don't know, his English, he's still working on that English thing, so we'll we'll defer to Thomas if he wants us to change it. I think a young man in the league is going to dare talk to the great Randy Hahn, <laughs> yes. six-time Emmy winner. No, yep. thank you, sir. Five and the regional. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just in case you wanted to know. <laughs> Who's counting? Here's Thornton now as he looks for Pavelski at the front of the net. It's cleared down by the Canucks as we're down under two minutes. So we'll await with interest certainly the next meeting, and we won't have to wait long. A week from tonight, the Sharks will open their road schedule in Vancouver, and that will be especially interesting. Don't miss that, nor don't miss Saturday night's tilt here against Phoenix. Sharks on the power play here. Coyle's shot on Luongo with glove save, and... You hearken back to the earlier parts in this game, the second half of the first period. And Roberto Luongo really held the Canucks in this game for a long, long time. But eventually, the Sharks were able to break through. Well, I think when you look at the Vancouver Canucks, they came out very hard, very aggressive, like their coach wanted. We're good on the forecheck. Then the Sharks started to figure that out. We're able to break some of those forechecks. And then the game kind of changed a little bit with the power plays and how the Canucks couldn't play five on five. And the Sharks just eventually were able to come out on top here. With a 123 left. Daniel took that off the foot. Yeah. That's, what the, that's what you risk when you put the big guys out there on the PK. But I think John wants to get them used to that. You're yep. going to have to sacrifice. Demers and he misfires. And it comes to Hurdle. Hurdle with an assist tonight for his first NHL point. He controls the puck now on the near board. Brett, is this kind of an audition for all these Canuck players too about where they're going to be positioned throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, anytime you have a new coach, there's no doubt he's got to 
get a sense for the players what type of situations he can put players in and no doubt he's looking at what these guys can do and each one of these players is going to have a little audition before these next 10 games down to 15 seconds on this power play the sharks seem to be in a comfortable spot here a three goal lead a little over half a minute remaining and apparently coming up to pellet Far side of the ice, Canucks bring it into the San Jose zone, a touch by the Sharks, and we'll get the holding call against Matt Pellick. We encourage you to stay tuned. We'll have the three stars here, and then Esurance Sharks post game live. It comes up next with Brody Brazil, Brett Hedick, and Jamie Baker. You talk about a star studded cast. Imagine how many Emmys they have between the three of them. Well, I think only Brody has them all. Live from here at SAP Center, it's post game live. Brought to you by Esurance coming up next. Four on four here to close out the rest of this. Now the Canucks on a brief power play. Henrik looking for Daniel. Under 10 to go. Vlasic with a block. He's given a shove by Kessler. Look at Mark Edward Vlasic working here late in a hockey game. And that'll do it. And a very fine debut of this 2013-14 version of the San Jose Sharks as they make it 10 in a row against the Canucks, winning this one 4-1. And as usual, when we're talking about the San Jose Sharks and a win, we're talking about a collective. Patrick Marlowe with a goal. Logan Couture, two assists. Brent Burns with a goal. It, you look at this team and the way they played tonight, and there's the beast that really got along the way he looks tonight. He started things off for the Sharks. But I thought this team, on tonight's game, Randy, took a little while to get used to that aggressive four-check pressure of the, of the Vancouver Canucks. But once they figured out, and as Brett Hedekin said, that second period, Logan Couture's line kind of kicked in, things started to roll for the San Jose Sharks. Sharks win by three on a night when they went 0 for 8 on the power play. That was not their undoing. Five on five, they got it all done, and that's encouraging, too. It was an area that they focused on in training camp, in the preseason. They were looking for improvement, and I know it's just one of 82, but it's a good start. Very good start, without a doubt, and you look at the way the Sharks finished this game, that's even a better, better look for this team. Here's the three stars. Tonight's three stars of the game are brought to you by PlayStation. The third star of tonight's game, from your Sharks, Number 48, Thomas Hurdle. The second star of tonight's game from your Sharks, number 57, Tommy Wingles. And the number one star of tonight's game from your Sharks, number 39, Logan Couture. And let's head over to the Sharks bench and join Brody Brazil. Logan, for you guys to open up this game and really pull away in the last six minutes, number one, how'd you do it? Number two, what was it like? I think we four-checked harder. Uh, obviously, Patty's goal was huge, and uh, Tommy's was even bigger. Um, I thought we played a pretty good game. Power play needs to get a little bit better, though. Tell me about the assist that you made after creating that turnover to Patrick Marlowe. How'd you know where he was and how were you able to get him that puck? Just took a quick look over my left shoulder and uh, Patty gave me a yell, so I fired it over there and he made a great shot. Tonight was 19-year-old Thomas Hurdle's first game in the NHL. He gets his first point on an assist to Brent Burns. His English is wor he's working on that, right? We're not going to get to really know him for a while, so tell us what he's like and what he means to this team right now. He's a great kid. Uh, like you said, his English isn't great. He smiles a lot and nods and laughs, so I think we're starting to understand. Uh, he just loves playing the game of hockey. Um, great talent for 19 years old, and he's just going to get a lot better. Logan, last thing is this for you guys. It's now 10 straight wins against the Canucks when you go back to last regular season, last postseason, this preseason. That's got to be a great way to kick off this season for you guys with the win, but not only that, to know how you guys have played against them in the past and moving forward. Yeah, it's always fun beating those guys. Uh, it's, it's no secret. They don't like us. We don't like them. But uh, 
it's nice playing uh, at home in front of this crowd. Hopefully we can keep it going on Saturday. Logan, congratulations. Thanks, party. Logan Couture and the San Jose Sharks, perfect so far through one game. Indeed they are, at the very least, tied for first place with two <laughs> points. The final score from here in San Jose, the Sharks four, the Canucks one, and Sharks post game live.